Senate's uh, House Committee Investigating Fusion GPS has kept information uh, within the committee. It's behind closed doors, a lot of which is classified. Uh, information that is given, you know, in executive session by the FBI or by the Department of Justice or what have you. And it's all behind closed doors. Members of the committee have access to it. Even members of Congress do not. So in what I believe is a brilliant move, the committee head, uh, Devin Nunez, had a memo created summarizing the information that has been gathered by the committee thus far. And then the committee voted, across, of course, across partisan lines, to release that memo to members of Congress who can then go to a secure room and view the memo and, and see what the findings are. And we've had members of Congress coming out daily. Uh, Raul Labrador, Steve King, um, you know, so, so many different other members of, of Congress coming out. Mark Meadows coming out, the head of Homeland Security Committee, saying, my God, the revelations in this memo must be released because they are not only so striking, they, there should be arrests from it, there should be further investigation, another special investigator, and it's got the political world in an absolute uproar. But this is genius, Russ. They, you can't release the classified information, but the memo about it, you can release through uh, parliamentary procedure in the Congress, uh, which then goes to the President. The President can give the up or down about releasing it. So in about two weeks or so, we might see this memo, and if you believe our friends of the show, like, like Steve King and Mark Meadows, who've been on the show before, if you believe them, this is going to be the biggest scandal since Watergate. I agree, Gene, and I'll tell you what has Chuck Schumer and probably Hillary Clinton and a lot of, maybe even President Obama himself and some, uh, definitely a lot of his underlings, very worried. The chief executive, Gene, the President of the United States, has the ultimate authority of declassifying Whatever he wants. So it doesn't even matter if this stuff is classified. If President Trump decides with the stroke of a pen, he could just make it an unclassified document and release it. Now, you don't think people are very frightened of of that potentiality? I mean, I can't wait. I mean, Donald Trump has the ace in the hole. He can let it go. You said we have to dig deeper, Gene. So, I mean, think about it. I said Senator Johnson said we have to dig deeper. But, yes. No, yeah. So, so think about this, Gene. So you have Hillary Clinton emails deleted, lost, whatever it was, right? Debbie Wasserman Schultz. She had some Pakistani IT guy. Uh, all his stuff lost. The FBI now fifty thousand text messages unretrievable during the uh, time frame when when all this stuff is going down. From December to to what was it? from December to May, right? From December of sixteen to yeah. May of seventeen. I mean, you know, I was I was watching TV earlier, and and one of the commentators said. Can you imagine if Donald Trump Jr.'s emails from December to May mysteriously disappeared? Do you think the media would give him a pass? Like, look at these. De- it's a Democratic. Like, they're not even hiding it anymore, Gene. We I got one the biggest better. thing since Watergate. I think it's the biggest thing since the last thing the Democrats did. I got one better for you, Russ. Imagine if you told the government, well, I lost six months of pay stubs, so I can't exactly be accurate with what I report to you on my taxes. How are they going to feel about that from you and me? Yeah, I mean, imagine how the people who get charged with obstruction of justice feel right now when when, when you got the FBI themselves losing documents that are that are clearly relevant in, in an investigation against the president of the United States. I mean, come on. This is a coup, Gene. I don't know how else to say it. it, it it's getting close to it, as close to it in America as we've ever seen possibly if all this information comes out. But, you know, you have people on the Hill saying this will take the handcuffs off Jeff Sessions and he'll be able to unrecuse himself and be able to take control of this Russia investigation again. And, you know, and in the whole landscape that we have right now of midterm elections coming up, of a fractured Democrat party already reeling from, from a loss of this, uh, Schumer shutdown and everything that we've discussed in, in, you know, the past half hour of the show here, it's almost dizzying to think that not only will President Trump be exonerated from the whole Russia collusion narrative, but you may end up with some of the biggest prizes in political history being caught up in what could be the largest scandal of our lifetime. Gene, Jeff Sessions is a good man, Attorney General Jeff Sessions. But I really, I don't think he's the man for the job. Uh, President Trump early on said that, you know, if he had known he was going to recuse himself, he probably would have never put him in position. 
I predict that it won't be long before Session steps aside and and just resigns. Uh, he's not the right man for the job. He, he's basically an establishment Republican. Listen, I agree with him on a lot of political viewpoints, but the attorney general spot's not really a political viewpoint kind of thing. So we need like a, a bulldog. Look at the rest of the, the president's cabinet. I mean, these guys and girls are tough. Look at the press secretary, uh, Sanders. Tough woman, Kellyanne Conway. You can go down the list. Stephen Miller, who Chuck uh, Schumer blames. Secretary and Lindsey Mattis. Blames. Miller is a uh, dynamite dude. Sessions is a, is he's not up to the test. So what you're saying is that Jeff Sessions is not a wartime consigliere. He's definitely not. Listen, if we were talking about like just doing some immigration deals and enforcing immigration law, he's the right guy. But when you're going up against, and I, I know I'm like overusing the word, what I believe to be a, a, a soft coup in, 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 within our own government, Jeff Sessions is not the guy. He's just not the guy. He recused himself early on before he even knew what the hell was going on. And I get it. Not only was he misled, the entire American public was misled. Uh, the fix was in. Hillary Clinton's uh, exoneration letter was written before the investigation was even over. I get it. But, dude, if you don't unrecuse yourself now, if that's a word, then you got to – then what are you waiting for? Like I- I'm losing faith in the man. I-, I can see why President Trump was frustrated. President Trump got dragged through the mud. You think it's an accident, Gene? That now they're saying he paid off through a lawyer, some porn star that he had sex with. I mean, they're, they're really trying to destroy this man and his family. Did you watch the press conference with his with his medical report? Like they're asking, what's the president's life expectancy? Will he survive a term? And Sanjay Gupta, that Gupta uh, from CNN. <laughs> you know, I don't even know what else to call that loser. Yeah, th- yeah. Th- you know, does he have heart disease? The man's 71. He's in phenomenal shape. Get off his Back. Like, I can't I'll tell you what. How petty these people are, Gene. I'll put a picture of a seventy-year-old Donald Trump next to a picture of a seventy-year-old Bill Clinton any day, and twice yes. on Sunday. He looks like a skeleton. Uh, the President Clinton. Come on. Where, where were they back then? Where were they, Gene? This is just astonishing. And like I said, I really earlier, I really think the Democratic Party is taking its lead from the media. There are no leaders in the Democratic Party. Nancy Pelosi is truly senile. Senile, Gene. And I'll say she might be suffering from dementia. It's not Donald Trump. It's, it's Nancy Pelosi. It, it's it's a, maybe a lot more than that. You know what, Russ? You, you mentioned the media. When we come back from this next break, we're going to talk about... Pulling the veil back on the media, and it ties into this giveaway that we've been teasing about. You'll find out all about that when we come back. Gene and Russ, Behind Enemy Lines. We're back right after this. Hey folks, I just want to let you know about a great opportunity for listeners of Behind Enemy Lines Radio. If you go to our website, www.behindenemylinesradio.us, and click on the same box ad on the right side of the page, you will get... A great opportunity for a discounted offer to join SaneBox. SaneBox filters out all the unimportant email from your inbox so that you can really focus on what matters. If you're anything like me, folks, you get hundreds of pieces of email a day, not many of which is important. SaneBox's smart filter will get everything you need to fly through your inbox and finally make email work for you. It gets rid of spam emails, it deprioritizes emails that aren't as important to you, And it helps you unsubscribe from mailing lists and individual senders with ease. So again, go to www.behindenemylinesradio.us and you click on the same box ad and you'll be given an exclusive offer you won't find anywhere else. Gene Russ, back behind enemy lines. Folks, we're going to do a little bragging right now. Because I don't know if you know this, but Russ and I are kind of big deals. You know, people know us and, you know, we we travel in some pretty high circles. I don't know if you know this, but... uh, (laughs) Yeah, we kind of got it like that. What are you laughing about, Russ? We got it like that. Don't, don't. All right, you don't believe me? Fine. I'm going to make you a believer right now, folks. Last week, Russ and I were invited to the official book launch for James O'Keefe's new book, American Pravda, My Fight for Truth in the Era of Fake News. Uh, it, it was a great event. 300 people attended. Steve Forbes was there going to get a copy of the book. I saw Milo Yiannopoulos hanging out there with uh, Gavin McGinnis and, you know, f- lots of other political people there that were there to celebrate the book from the founder of Project Veritas. And his struggles are detailed in here of, of his fight against uh, liberal media and uh, for, you know, to protect the credibility of not only his organization, but to also bring back credibility to journalism, which ties into what Russ and I were talking about before. But before we get back to business, 
You want this book, American Pravda, just released, sure to be a New York Times bestseller? Well, how about a signed copy of it, signed by James O'Keefe himself? Because that's what James did for Behind Enemy Lines. He gave us a free signed copy of his new book, American Pravda, My Fight for Truth in the Era of Fake News, to give away to a lucky listener. So how are you going to do that? It's simple. It's a three-step thing. It's easy as one, two, three. Step one, go to Behind Enemy Lines Radio and like our page on Facebook. Step two, find our post talking about this book giveaway, like that post and comment on it for us, and then share that post on your Facebook page so others can get in on the fun as well. You do those three things and you're automatically entered into a drawing for the book, which will then reveal... In about two weeks, I think the date we gave was uh, Saturday, the first Saturday in February, right before the Super Bowl, uh, the day before the Super Bowl. And uh, can we say Super Bowl on air? Well, I did it three times, and I guess we'll get sued for it. Whatever. Uh, and uh, we'll do a drawing uh, live on Facebook, and you could win this book. So you see, Russ, we are kind of big deals. Gene, did you have a blast there, by the way? Because I didn't get a chance to go. I, I yeah, was invited. I... Gene was gracious enough to uh, RSVP for me, and then last minute something came up, and I couldn't make it. And I was very jealous. You know what, Russ? It was a really good time. Uh, Stefan Molyneux gave a great uh, introduction of James. James gave a great speech. And then everyone in attendance was able to get a free copy of the book as a thank you for the support that we've given him and Project Veritas over the years. And uh, he was ha- gracious enough to sign copies for people as, as we were leaving. It was it was a really great event, Russ. And uh, you know, all credit to Project Veritas, especially for the work that they're doing in exposing big tech, and specifically the, t- the Twitters that we all know and loathe. Uh, and, oh, oh and by the way, by the way, you have to, I have to tell you this. Um, they were giving away T-shirts. I think I, I, think I got you one, right? Uh, the T-shirts of the Twitter logo upside down with X's over its eyes in, in a celebration of what they were exposing on Twitter. <laughs> it, it was, uh, they had hats with the same thing. I couldn't get one of those, but it was, it was a great event. But Gene, I, I told you he did give you his pimp hat from the Acorn video. I wish, I wish <laughs> that would have been something to get. Right? It was unreal. <laughs> Actually, there was a guy around there dressed up like a cheeseburger, wearing a T-shirt underneath it that said "Nothing Burger," which I thought was oh, phenomenal. That's great. But in New York City, that's not a shock. I see people dressed up like crazy things all the time. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, you guys. The stories we can tell, folks. But let's talk about what Project Veritas has been doing uh, with Twitter and exposing, you know. The the corruption behind the curtain, if you want to call it that, let's let's stick with the theme of corruption. Twitter not only has access to all your personal information, your passwords, your messages, your DMs, your pictures of your privates, pictures of the privates that you've received, uh, you know, direct messages, deleted direct messages, deleted tweets, tweets that you put out, uh, all kinds of all types of uh, demographic information, and you know, collected by algorithms and whatever. But they can also filter your information and who gets and receives it in what's been discussed as shadow banning, Russ. Uh, that you may not, your message may not be banned per se, but it'll be limited in scope to just your followers and will not be disseminated into the greater Twitter sphere, I guess. And uh, I'm going to guess, Gene, that uh, shadow banning is more prevalent amongst Twitterers who lean right of center. I think that you're correct in that, Russ. We wrote an article from Newsmax a few weeks back about the changes in rules for Twitter and how they can now ban you by association if you're associated with someone, whether on Twitter or not, with views that would be considered offensive or, you know, in their judgment, just improper or whatever it may be. The hidden videos found by James O'Keefe and Project Veritas have engineers saying, we're not really banning speech, we're banning a way of speaking. Which, by the way, is speech, but I also want to make sure we <laughs> are clear on that. We're not banning what you're saying. We're just banning how you're saying what you're saying. Yeah, huh? By the way, Gina, I, I got to send you something that I received from Twitter not long ago, and this is actually serious. Um, I've been busy, so I didn't get a chance to look into it. But I got a message from Twitter that said that it was a warning because I retweeted a, something that a Russian bot had sent out. Now, I don't know how true this is because I, I didn't look into it too deeply, but I'm going to forward you the message, Gene. we got to look into this. This is Oh, uh, this is interesting. Funny. Yeah, this is interesting. I want to see I'm not going to say I didn't do it because it's quite possible, but <laughs> but I'm dying to see what the message was. Well, I mean, listen, a Russian bot can be right twice a day, right? I mean, you never know. Point being, folks, uh, check out these videos with Project Veritas. Uh, there's three of them now. Uh, and, you know, I'm not saying that the recent news of uh, their financial officer abruptly resigning and going to 
run another company has anything to do with James O'Keefe, but it might have something to do with it. I mean, executives don't exactly quit without letting 